Want to double the network speed of your true NAS scale server? Stay tuned. I recently put together a new computer for myself and it included an onboard 2.5 gigabit NIC and that started a chain reaction. Uh, I upgraded my switch from 1 gigabit to 2.5 gigabit and the next component is my TrueNAS scale box. Uh, I'm not transferring large uh, files frequently here and it's just for my home lab and for my family of four so going to 2.5 gigabit uh, would be a nice modest upgrade uh, using the existing uh, cable I've run. And quite frankly, I'm not quite ready to go to uh, 10 gigabit E yet. I purchased the TP-Link TX201 2.5 gigabit PCIe network adapter. Uh, this is a popular 2.5 gigabit E NIC on Amazon. Uh, it's backwards compatible to 1 gigabit and 100 megabits per second. Uh, from what I'm reading, uh, this NIC is using the Realtek chipset. Uh, in general, I've heard good and bad on the uh, TrueNAS forms for both Realtek and Intel uh, 2.5 gigabit E chipsets. So I figured I'd give uh, this one a try and give you my real world experience. I'll put a link to this NIC in the description below. All right, let's get started. Okay, and what I did was I recently upgraded my TrueNAS scale server to the latest version. Uh, okay, just want to confirm that there are no updates available. And now I'm going to gracefully shut down the NAS. And my instance of TrueNAS scale is running on a Dell PowerEdge T30. Um, I unplugged all the cables, removed the side panel, I removed the uh, slot cover that I'm going to use, and now I'm just going to insert the uh, new NIC into the fastest PCIe slot. All right, and the uh, TrueNAS scale box has been powered on, uh, logging in through the uh, web interface. When we go into network, Nice, sure enough, the uh, second NIC is recognized. And out of curiosity, let's look into the details. All right, and uh, let's see, we see the onboard Intel NIC, as well as the Realtek uh, RTL 8125 2.5 gigabit E uh, NIC. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the BIOS of the box and disable the onboard NIC, and uh, confirm that the uh, newly installed 2.5 gigabit NIC is working as expected. And the uh, network cable was moved from the onboard NIC to the newly installed 2.5 gigabit NIC. So earlier what I did was delete the original onboard interface and for the new 2.5 gigabit uh, Ethernet NIC, uh, what I did was I added the uh, alias, uh, which was the original IP address of the TrueNAS server, uh, 192.168.1.230, and that's a uh, slash 24 IP address. Let's save, uh, apply, and then we want this to be persistent. And then let's quit. And just to make sure that uh, the IP address took, I'm going to reboot the system. Nice, and the uh, .230 IP address was uh, kept after the reboot. And when we go back to the uh, dashboard and look at the uh, networking, uh, looks like the uh, outgoing stats are showing uh, over 2 gigabits per second uh, at the time of the copy. And here's a copy test of uh, two gigs worth of files. Um, on the left, we have the 2.5 gigabit NIC, and on the right, we have the one gigabit NIC. And as you can see, uh, the copy times took less than half with the upgraded NIC.
It's been several weeks and I've been extremely happy with the uh, upgrade to 2.5 gigabit E on the true NAS scale server. Uh, it's been completely reliable. Uh, I know that there's been some controversy regarding these 2.5 gigabit NICs with uh, Realtek and Intel drivers and the true NAS community has been urging people to make the jump to 10 gig. Uh, but I've had no issues with uh, connectivity after numerous large transfers and several restarts. Uh, as a matter of fact, I restarted uh, the uh, NAS uh, prior to the, making this video. Uh, the benefits are most noticeable when transferring large amounts of data, uh, backups, uh, YouTube videos, uh, ISOs, movies, etc. And with the popularity of 2.5 gigabit E uh, going up in the industry and the fact that the prices of the uh, NICs and switches are coming down, the decision to upgrade to 2.5 gigabit uh, was an easy one for me. Uh, the NIC was roughly $25 and the switch with uh, 8 2.5 gigabit E ports and a, a 10 gig SFP port was uh, roughly $55. I'll put links to them in the description below. Uh, I can't speak for enterprise environments, but uh, this was a fantastic upgrade from my home setup. If you found this video helpful, please click like, and if you'd like to see more of my videos in the future, please click subscribe. Thank you.